Shane, there's no way. Seven? Shane, you have seven Oreo cookies in your <laughs> mouth. <laughs> no! <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen. He's trying so hard to get it in there. Like, bring in the shoehorn. You're not getting a <laughs> out. You got nine in there. Oh my <laughs> lord, Jesus. Hey, what's up, you guys? Yes, today we're gonna be talking about more conspiracy theories. But today's video is gonna be a little bit different because we're only gonna be talking about one, and that is the conspiracy theories revolving around the death of John Benet Ramsey. So for those of you who don't know, John Benet Ramsey was a six-year-old beauty pageant queen who died in 1996. She died the day after Christmas and was found dead in her basement. So first, let me explain how all the events unfolded. So the morning after Christmas, her mother, Patsy Ramsey, walked downstairs to make some coffee. That's where she found on the stairs a ransom note. The ransom note said that they had captured John Benet Ramsey, and if they wanted to see her alive again, they'd have to pay him $118,000 cash. So Patsy woke up her husband John and their son Burke, and they called 911. When the police came over, they started searching the house for any kind of evidence they could find. John, the father, ended up going into the basement, and that's where he found the body. And the body was in very bad shape. The six-year-old girl had been struck over the head and had been strangled. John grabbed her body, brought it out to the living room where everybody was standing, put it on the floor, and just cried. And to this day, nobody knows who killed her, but there are some theories. So the first theory is that it was her mother, Patsy. So Patsy was a former pageant queen herself, and she was what a lot of people refer to as a very intense stage mom. She was pretty much living through her daughter. She wanted her daughter to be just like her. But like a lot of stage moms, she might have taken it too far. So a lot of people think that she was abusive, and that one night she snapped. They think she hit or pushed John Benet too hard, and maybe she hit the ground and cracked open her head. And supposedly when that happened, the mom freaked out, called the dad over, the dad was like, oh my God, and then that's when they tried to cover it up. So the theory is that they came up with a plan. The mom would write a ransom note, they'd call the cops, they'd put the body in the basement, they'd strangle it and make it look like it was some kind of child molester. And because John loved his wife, he was willing to go along with this. So here's some evidence that points to that being real. Number one, scientists took samples of John and Patsy's writing and compared it to the ransom note. And they found a lot of similarities with Patsy's writing. The note was also written on Patsy's stationery set that was in her office. And another piece of evidence was there was undigested pineapple found inside of John Benet's stomach when they did the autopsy. So she had to have eaten that pineapple within like an hour of her dying. Well, police found a bowl of half-eaten pineapple on the dining room table. And guess whose fingerprints were on it? Patsy's. And when the cops asked Patsy about this, she said, oh, I have no idea. I don't remember John Benet eating anything. I was asleep. Well, then how are her fingerprints on the bowl? The second theory is that John, her father, did it. When they did the autopsy, they also found that John Benet's privates had been messed with and that it looked like they had been messed with for a while. The scientists said that John Benet looked like she had been sexually abused for a few years. And that's when everybody started to think it could have been her dad. So the theory is that one night her dad was sexually abusing her and he got out of hand and he accidentally hit her head. And then the mom came in and tried to help him cover it up. The next theory is that it was her nine-year-old brother, Burke. So a lot of people think the brother did it because maybe he was jealous of his sister. She was getting all this attention from her dad and from her mom. She was a beauty pageant queen. Nobody cared about him. And they think that one night he just snapped. Some evidence that points to that is that there was two holes in John Benet's neck. Now initially, scientists thought that that was from a taser gun or from a stun gun from somebody that came into the house. But then, in the basement, they found one of Burke's train tracks. And when they put the train track to her neck, it matched perfectly. Also, when police were interviewing Burke, he was answering them with things that kids just wouldn't say. He was saying things like, I do not recall. It sounded very rare. So a lot of people think that Burke accidentally killed his sister in a fit of rage and the parents, once again, tried to help him cover it up because they didn't want their son to go to jail. And the last theory is that it was a Santa Claus. Let me explain. So two days before she died, a man named Bill McReynolds came to the house dressed as Santa Claus. I guess he had came to the house like three years in a row. It was part of their tradition. Well, reports say that he gave John Benet a card with a handwritten note. And on the note it said, you will receive a special gift after Christmas. Even creepier, 22 years before John Benet died, this man, Bill, his daughter was abducted and killed. And she was abducted the day after Christmas, just like John Benet was. Also, he wrote a play about a girl who was abducted and then sexually abused in a basement and then killed. What? They also found DNA on John Benet's panties that doesn't belong to anybody in the family, like a stranger's DNA, and they haven't been able to match it to anybody. 
And the last theory, of course, that we've already talked about before is that John Bonet didn't die. She grew up to be Katy Perry. I mean, I don't think that one's true. So this year is the 20th anniversary of John Bonet's murder, and we still don't know who did it. In 2006, her mother Patsy died of cancer, so we'll never know if she did it. And the father claims that the killer is still out there. Her brother even did his first interview on TV ever, 20 years later, and it was kind of creepy. Let's clear this up once and for all. Did you do anything to harm your sister, John Bonet? No. Did you murder your sister, John Bonet? No. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not saying he did it, but what the fuck? Why was he laughing and smiling? I don't know. Okay, so here's what I want to do. We don't know what the truth is. We have all of our suspects, we have all of our evidence, so why don't we talk to two people who might have an idea? So as you guys know, for the last couple of years, I have worked with and been friends with the Psychic Twins. And not only have the Psychic Twins predicted 9-11 and other terrorist attacks, they've also solved murder cases and figured out where bodies were hidden. So now, for the first time with me on my channel, they are going to talk about who they think killed John Bonet. Here we go. Okay guys, so we are here with the Psychic Twins. Thank you guys for being here. And uh, we are going to talk about the case of John Bonet Ramsey. Okay. okay. Where do we start? <laughs> well, where do we start? This was no accident. It was not an accidental killing, in our opinion. We've been channeling on this for probably 20 years, Shane. And we remember, as you do, when it happened, it was uh, really the biggest whodunit probably in history. Uh, we feel that this cover-up goes very, very high to the Illuminati. This is not just, yes. Oh, I got so excited. Yes. Okay. I, yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. This is something that nobody knows. There's a reason the family and the police do not call us in on these cases, Shane. And it's because they don't want and this solved. solved. Because you guys have solved murders before. Yes, you, you have. have. Bodies before. Yes, and you the have. police you call have. you guys a lot. Well, it's interesting because my initial thought when I saw all of this, you know, all the documentaries going on right now and stuff, the dad's whole thing is it was some random killer. It was a pedophile. But, you know, we just have to move yeah. on. If my daughter was killed by a random pedophile, I would be looking for that pedophile till the day so I So would I. Of course. We would Anyone be looking would. for the of killer. Of course. You would keep looking. You wouldn't try to get a plane out that day after finding your daughter's body in the wine cellar in your home. You wouldn't be trying to get a plane out two hours later. Which, by the way, is something I didn't mention earlier is, mm -hmm. yeah, the day that the kid died, yes. he was trying to get a plane to go somewhere. Yeah, he was on the phone while the police were there. Crazy. And he was yeah. trying to book a pilot for a plane and he to had, get out. He had for private the planes, he could easily have done that. But people overheard him. There is a lot that's been suppressed. Even DNA evidence has been wiped clean from computers. I don't think people realize how much tampering has been going on behind the scenes. This goes so high, Shane, that the cover-up just, it goes to the highest levels. Yes. And we're talking all the way to the Illuminati. Okay, so let's break it down. So yeah. what, what really happened? We feel that... <laughs> oh my God, I'm scared. <laughs> we feel that the family, of course, is responsible. It was not an outside intruder. No, it wasn't an intruder. And the whole family staged this cover-up. They were all in on it. There was sex abuse. There was a sex ring that was being investigated. I heard that. Yes, Did in you? the Boulder area and the Denver yeah. area. There was also a child sex ring. We're talking about ritualistic overtones here. This is really dark. Did you know that John Ramsey's first daughter from his first marriage, Elizabeth, was mysteriously killed in a car accident and was never really solved. Notice how they never mentioned that in the documentary. And she had had memories of past sexual abuse and people in robes and even her father really? came up with those yes. memories when she was in therapy and she tried to cut her. I, I don't know how she tried to commit suicide, but she did shortly after having those or memories to look that of the sex abuse. And then just weeks later, she was mysteriously killed in a car accident. What you're saying is you think it was like a group of people. A group of people that... Well, they were involved in her death. We have a strong opinion that it was the father that did it. Burke is the red herring. Burke is the scapegoat, the, the mm -hmm. son. The distraction. You know, yes, he has problems. Yes, he's been hiding for 20 years. But mm -hmm. uh, we don't feel that it was the brother that did it. Yeah. The dad. Was it just him that did it? I feel we that it was. We feel that it was he, but we did, See, we, I we feel, feel Patsy wrote the, the ransom note, and it was in her hand, and it right. probably took her over a half hour to do it. There was a lot of plotting to cover this up, but we don't believe it was accidental. Wait, so, okay, but why would the dad want to kill the dog? I feel that there was sex abuse for years. 
And in okay. fact, in fact, if you they have are heard. able to look at the records, which I think they've been sealed and closed, but she did see a doctor something like 32 or 33 times for, for yeast, infections. yeast infections and vaginal yeah. problems yeah. at the age of five. Okay, so dad killed her, supposedly, maybe. Mom knew that dad killed her? Uh, yes. She discovered yes. that. And I think it's possible she may have even known about sex abuse. We're mediums, so we talk to the dead. And when we spoke to John Benet, this week, she yeah. said, Daddy She did said, it. I kept saying, John Monet, tell us who did Wait, okay, let's do that. So, mm -hmm. you're gonna, so we're going to channel John Benet. Yeah. And we're going to talk to her. Okay, we're connecting with John Benet Ramsey. We clothe ourselves in the white light of God and call on the angels to protect us from any harmful energy or negative energy. We connect with the spirit of John Benet. Are you with us? Yes. Yes. I am here. Thank you for coming in and speaking with us today, Jean Benet. We've been talking about your sad uh, passing and we've been talking with you a lot this week. Can you tell us what happened that night that you were killed? It was a shock. I was so surprised. I forgive Daddy and Mommy for what happened. I forgive everyone involved in my murder. So who actually caused your death? I have to be honest and tell you it was my daddy. My daddy. And I forgive him. It went on for a while. No one knew. Was he afraid you were going to tell someone? Oh, yes. Very afraid. It is not what it seems, not what it seems. Mommy knew and did not tell. Mommy knew, very painful. Are you with her now? Yes, yes. Okay. Mommy is here. Thank you, Jean-Bené, for joining us today, and we wish you peace. You are so welcome. God bless you. God bless you all. Thank you, John Binet. That was emotional. Wow. I don't cry very much. No, that was. But it felt that real was, to me. I felt she was really present. <laughs> what did you feel? Oh Jane? my God. <laughs> that was so intense. We, we don't usually expect what's going to come through. And I think. There's so much investment in this being tied up and made very clean and there you go, nothing to see here. And I think it's good to entertain other ideas. We originally thought it was just a conspiracy on who actually killed her. Turns out it's a conspiracy even bigger than that. It goes very, very high up. And honestly, I am not surprised. <laughs> Especially with all the stuff we always talk about, right. the Illuminati. That's are right. We, can we be scared for talking about this? Well, we I think always are. <laughs> <laughs> we absolutely have to uh, say a legal caveat that these are psychic impressions that you know, so that we are not a target, and we don't I, seek to indict anyone. Right. We do feel the indictment should have happened, but it never did. Again, if, if anybody uh, is a target, it should be the police and the DA. If there was a cover up here and if they were in on the cover-up, yeah. you know, they're the ones that should be investigating this further rather yes. than, you know, drawing a line in the sand. And the Ramsey family should not be closing a door to this. And Absolutely. John Ramsey actually said, this is my last interview on Dr. Phil. There is a lot that we don't know about that's been wiped clean from the records. Well, there you guys go. Killer John Bonet might not be the brother or the mom. Oh, and by the way, guys, we did another video on their channel where we talked about celebrity predictions and we yes. talked about Justin Bieber, talked about a lot of celebrities, and there is a lot of the shocking stuff. So go check <laughs> <Shocking>. it out. <laughs> All right, see you guys later. Bye. So there you guys go. Hopefully you enjoyed that different conspiracy theory video. And let me know down in the comments, who do you think killed John Bonet? Also give this video a thumbs up if you want more conspiracy theory videos and subscribe to my channel right down below because I make new videos every single day. And if you want to see more of my conspiracy theory videos, I've done like 20 of them. I'll put a link to a playlist right at the top of the description below. All right, you little conspiracy theorists, I will see you tomorrow. Don't believe everything you hear. Bye. There is an actual poster <laughs> for the Whopperito. The fuck? <laughs> Like, I know when I was a kid, you used to get like a poster of like Britney Spears and you put it up on your wall and you'd like pretend that you were jerking off to it when in reality you just wanted to be her.